Good morning, boys and girls. Well, we didn't get together last week, so let's have an extra special big hug since we're together again this week. Mm, it's so good to see you, and I hope all of you had a wonderful Thanksgiving with lots of food and family fun. Mrs. Dietz didn't get to have her big Thanksgiving this year, but she had one family, and we ate in the garage, and we wore masks, and we were way apart. The family was in one side of the garage, and I was in, and my husband and I were in the other side of the garage, but we had a good time. It was different, but that's okay. Different can be fun, too. And this year, we've had to have many adventures with lots of different things and difference in the way that we do things. Well, this is a time when we have lots of holidays. We just had Thanksgiving, and there's another holiday that's coming up really soon. Does anybody know what it is? Let's think a minute. Is it Valentine's Day? No. Is it Easter? No. Well, what else do we have? Oh, we have the 4th of July with fireworks. No. Let's see. This holiday has to do with a man in a red suit and a very special baby that's born and his mother puts him in a manger. Can you think what this holiday is? Let's see. We have Christmas trees, and you can maybe see one of my Christmas trees behind me. Mrs. Dietz has 18 Christmas trees in her house. Let's see, what would that holiday be called? I think I know, do you? Is it called Christmas? Well, all this month, as we get ready for Christmas, we're going to be reading some stories about Christmas. And Christmas is a wonderful time when we think about the people we love and we give to the people we love and we get presents because God gave us the greatest present of all. And that was his son, Jesus. And Santa Claus comes and shows us how making, giving presents makes us all so happy, just like our the best gift in the world that we got, which was the baby Jesus. Well, today I want to read you a story about a Christmas tree, and it's called Mr. Willoughby's Christmas Tree. Now, this is a book that Mrs. Dietz has had for a long, long time, ever since her first baby was born. And this book is going to be almost 60, and that's a lot of numbers, almost 60 years old. But her family has enjoyed it, and have, Mrs. Dietz has had grandchildren. She's given this book to her grandchildren, and I read it every year to the special boys and girls that I love. It's a book about giving, and this tree ends up giving to many, many people. So you see if you can listen and see how many people this tree gave a gift to. It's called, as I said, Mr. Willoughby's Christmas Tree. Let me just see if she can find the first page. Sometimes the pages want to stick together, and you'll have to be patient while Mrs. Dietz finds the page. Mr. Willoughby's Christmas tree came by special delivery, full and fresh and glistening green, the biggest tree he had ever seen. Look at this tree coming up on a truck to Mr. Willoughby's big house. Mr. Willoughby lives in a big house. He dashed downstairs to open the door. This was the moment he'd waited for. 
a magnificent tree. Splendid, he cried. Please, sir, won't you carry it right inside? I think it might look best this year, right in the parlor corner here. Now, parlor is another name for a living room. So he's putting his tree in his living room. But once the tree stood in its place, Mr. Willoughby made a terrible face. The tree touched the ceiling, then bent like a bow. Oh, good heavens, he gasped. Something must go. Baxter, the butler, was called on in haste to chop off the top though it seemed quite a waste. That's great, Mr. Willoughby cried with glee. Now we can start to trim my tree. When the trimming was well underway, the top was placed on a silver tray. Baxter said, I know just who'd be delighted with this Christmas tree. So it was presented to Miss Adelaide, the upstairs maid. Won't this tree be a pretty sight when I have trimmed it later tonight? But the top, oh dear, I'm so afraid. will have to be cut, sighed Miss Adelaide. Look here, the top's <laughs> bending again. And so with scissors, sharp and long, she snipped off the top while she hummed a song. The top was set out the very next day in back of the house to be thrown away. That little tree top caught the eye of Tim the gardener passing by. He certainly was not about to see that little tree thrown out. He hurried it right home straight away to see what Mrs. Tim would say. Fala la, surprise, surprise. His wife could not believe her eyes. But our house, she said, is so snug and small. I do not believe we need it all. And before Tim had a chance to shout, she cut off the top and she threw it out. Barnaby Bear was padding by. It almost hit him in the eye. Now who would throw a tree away so very close to Christmas Day? I'll take it home. That's what I'll do. Look, Mama Bear, I have a present for you. Isn't it a pretty tree? <gasps> Yawned Mama Bear quite drowsily. Before we go to sleep this year, let's have a Christmas party, dear. But little bear, standing all far, cried out, That tree won't hold a star. Barnaby said, Let's cut a hunk off at the bottom, here at the trunk. But Mama Bear just shook her head and sliced the treetop off instead. Jolly by golly! Barnaby said with a kick, Mama, that surely was just the right trick. Let's trim it with bells and honey rings, some berries and tinsel, and popcorn on string. Mama said, trim it just as you like. I've got to tidy up for the night. This, this top we won't need anymore. I'll put it just outside the door. Later on that frosty night, Frisky Fox came into sight. He spied the treetop, rubbed his chin, opened his sack, and stuffed the top in. Hmm. 
He scampered home and jumped his gate. This Christmas present couldn't wait. It's even better than mincemeat pie, said Mrs. Fox with a happy sigh. Then the foxes saw that their tree Christmas prize was just a wee bit oversized. There, my dears, now don't you worry. I'll fix this top now in a hurry. And she cut the top off again. Benjamin Rabbit found it then, just outside the fox's den. It seems, he thought, most certainly, Santa left that for my family. Look, he cried, see the tree I found? With that, call, with that he called his family round. Then there was a merry-making, rollicking, frolicking, carrot-shaking celebration around the tree. All were happy as rabbits can be. Benjamin Rabbit, with his own hand, sliced a carrot and made a stand. Now let's see how this will look in our little chimney nook. But right away the children cried, Look! It's leaning off to one side. It's too tall, that's all, said Mrs. Rabbit. And as though it were a summer carrot, she gave it a chop and threw away the top. Then Mistletoe Mouse just happened to see that tiny tip of a Christmas tree. He pulled it through the snow and ice, up some stairs, he fell down twice. At last he reached his cozy house. It's just the right size, said Mrs. Mouse. Then at the top, if you please, they put a star made out of cheese. Oh, wasn't it great to have a tree just like Mr. Willoughby's? See the mouse's tree down here and Mr. Willoughby's big tree up there. So that tree was a Christmas tree for lots and lots of animals and people. Now next week, Mrs. Dietz will see what else she can find to read about Christmas. You have a good day and we'll see you again next week. Goodbye.